The importance of water baptism held by the early church fathers. The following quotes, snippets really, on baptism from the early church fathers and history are on the importance of water baptism. I assume the church fathers have in mind the traditional water baptism, which was in the name of Jesus, during that time. The following is a true record of a baptism which took place in Rome AD 100. The deacon raised his hand, and Publius Decius stepped through the baptistry door. Standing waist-deep in the pool was Marcus Vasca the Woodsler. He was smiling as Publius waded into to the pool beside him. Credus, he asked. Credo, responded Publius. I believe that my salvation comes from Jesus the Christ, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate. With him I died that with him I may have eternal life. Then he felt strong arms supporting him as he let himself fall backward into to the pool and heard Marcus's voice in his ear, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus as the cold water closed over him. Schaff Herzog Encyclopedia of Religious Knowledge says, The New Testament knows only baptism in the name of Jesus, which still occurs even in the 2nd and 3rd centuries. The letter of Barnabas, regarding baptism. We have the evidence of scripture that Israel would refuse to accept the washing which confers the remission of sins and would set up a substitution of their own instead, Psalms 1 to 3 to 6. Observe there how he describes both the water and the cross in the same figure. His meaning is, blessed are those who go down into the water with the hopes set on the cross. Here he is saying that after we have stepped down into the water, Burdened with sin and defilement, we come up out of it bearing fruit, with reverence in our hearts and the hope of Jesus in our souls. Letter of Barnabas 11 to 1 through 10 AD. 74. The Shepherd of Hermes. I have heard, sir, said I, from some teacher, that there is no other repentance except that which took place when we went down into the water and obtained the remission of our former sins, he said to me. You have heard rightly, for so it is, the shepherd 4, 3 to 1 to 2 AD. 80. Ignatius of Antioch. Let none of you turn deserter. Let your baptism be your armor, your faith, your helmet, your love, your spear, your patient endurance, your panoply. Letter to Polycarp 6 AD. 110. Second Clement. For, if we do the will of Christ, we shall find rest, but if otherwise, then nothing shall deliver us from eternal punishment, if we should disobey his commandments. With what confidence shall we, if we keep not our baptism, pure and undefiled, enter into the kingdom of God? Or who shall be our advocate, unless we be found having holy and righteous works? 2 Clement 6-7-9 A.D. 150. Just and Martyr. Whoever are convinced and believe that what they are taught and told by us is the truth, and professes to be able to live accordingly, are instructed to pray and to beseech God in fasting for the remission of the former sins, while we pray and fast with them. Then they are led by us to a place where there is water, and they are reborn in the same kind of rebirth in which we ourselves were reborn. In the name of God, the Lord and Father of all, and of our Saviour Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, they receive the washing of water. For Christ said, Unless you be reborn, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. First Apology 61-14-17 AD 160 Note that baptism was changed from the first time from the Apostles' formula of the Lord Jesus Christ to a slightly extended form, but still it had the name of Jesus at its center. Clement of Alexandria. When we are baptized, we are enlightened. Being enlightened, we are adopted as sons. Adopted as sons, we are made perfect. Made perfect, we become immortal. And sons of the Most High, Psalms 82-6. This work is variously called grace, illumination, perfection, and washing. It is a washing by which we are cleansed of sins. 
a gift of grace by which the punishments due our sins are remitted, an illumination by which we behold that holy light of salvation, the instructor of children 1-6, 26-1 AD. 190. The Acts of Paul and Thecla. When she finished praying, she turned about and saw a pit of water and said, Now is a proper time for me to be baptized. Accordingly she threw herself into the water and said, In your name, O my Lord Jesus Christ, I am this last day baptized. Notwithstanding all this, Thecla threw herself into the water in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Acts of Paul and Thecla 9-3-5 AD 190 Ionius of Lyons. And Narmin dipped himself. Seven times in the Jordan, two kings. 514. It was not for nothing that Narmin of old, when suffering from leprosy, was purified upon his being baptized, but this served as an indication to us. For as we are lepers in sin, we are made clean, by means of the sacred water and the invocation of the Lord, from our old transgressions being spiritually regenerated as newborn babes, even as the Lord has declared. Backquote, Except a man be born again through water and the Spirit, he shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Fragment 34. 190 AD. Hippolytus. And the bishop shall lay his hand upon them the newly baptized, invoking and saying, O Lord God, who did he count these worthy of deserving the forgiveness of sins by the lava of regeneration? Make them worthy to be filled with your Holy Spirit and send upon them thy grace in confirmation, that they may serve you according to your will. The Apostolic Tradition 22 1 AD 215. This portion is mainly from Wikipedia under Jesus' name doctrine, with a few true facts thrown in. It is meant to amplify what has already been said. The views of mainstream Christianity to Jesus' name baptism is varied. The Roman Catholic Church states that only Trinitarian baptisms are valid. This view is plainly false as seen by the light of the sacred scriptures. As all the apostles, even Paul, Matthew and Peter, every single one of them all baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins from 33 AD onwards. One only needs to check these verses to verify this truth. They include Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Acts chapter 4 verse 10 to 12, Acts chapter 8 verse 16, Acts chapter 10 verse 47 and 48, Acts chapter 19 verse 3 to 6, Acts chapter 22 verse 16, Romans chapter 6 verse 1 through 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 and Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 among many other verses. Nobody was ever baptized into a trinity formula in the Word of God. While the Catholic Church does a had considered the other baptismal formula to be acceptable, since they were accepted by theologians of the past, the key requirement is that the baptism must have been performed by a church which, or a person who, believes in the trinity, that is according to them. Sir Thomas Bonaventure and Albertus Magnus held the view that the Apostles baptized in the name of Jesus only by special dispensation. Pope Nicholas I read to the Bulgarians that a person is not to be re-baptized who has already been baptized in the name of the Holy Trinity or in the name of Christ only. Martin Luther in his prelude on the Babylonian captivity of the church describes disagreements over the wording of the baptism as pedantry and argues for acceptance of baptisms in the name of Jesus. If carried out with proper intent. In circa 254, Pope Stephen I in the midst of the baptismal controversies with Cyprian declared that all baptisms in the name of Jesus are valid. Saint. Gennadius in his work Lives of Illustrious Men states that in the 3rd century, one Ursinus the monk during the Cyprian controversies argued that those who were baptized in the name of Christ alone, even if by heretics, did not need to be re-baptized. St. John Chrysostom argues for a literal interpretation of the Luke's records of baptisms in the name of Jesus, as accounted in Acts, St. 
Basil states that the naming of Christ is a confession of the whole. Saint Ambrose, mentor to Augustine, argued for the validity of baptisms in the name of Jesus. Augustine states that those baptized into other names need to be re-baptized into Christ elsewhere. He states knowledge of those who had been baptized into the name of Christ alone outside the apostolic era and likewise argues for a literal interpretation of Acts chapter 2 verse 38 in the name of Jesus. Saint Thomas Aquinas, while arguing for Trinitarian baptism, states that the apostles, Peter, James, John, etc., baptized in the name of Christ alone by special dispensation, whereas many modern scholars, by contrast, interpret the saying in the name of Jesus Christ figuratively instead of literally in an attempt to reconcile the two conflicting passages Acts chapter 2 verse 38 and Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Catholic Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger made this confession as to the origin of the chief trinity text of Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. The basic form of our Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 Trinitarian profession of faith took shape during the course of the 2nd and 3rd centuries in connection with the ceremony of baptism. So far as its place of origin is concerned, the text Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 came from the city of Rome, Joseph Ratzinger, Pope Benedict XVI, Introduction to Christianity. 1968 edition, pages 82 and 83. The Trinity baptism and text of Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, according to the former Pope, therefore did not originate from the original church that started in Jerusalem around AD 33. It was in his own words, a later invention of Roman Catholicism. The Baptist Standard Confession of 1660 declares baptisms in the name of Jesus Christ to be valid. This concludes this short study on the importance of water baptism. God bless you. Thanks for watching.